My Straight Talk family, it's that time of the evening, morning, or afternoon when I say good night, good morning, or good afternoon to the world. And of course, we say good night, a very pleasant night to St. Kitts and Nevis. And welcome to another edition of Straight Talk for uh, tonight. It's a uh, Thursday, the seventh day of March, and oh, how March is just rolling on. And I welcome all to Straight Talk, and I say a big, big thank you uh, for those of you who just continue to share the link. And the many of you who call, you can just subscribe to YouTube, and you'll get your alerts whenever. A straight talk is coming your way. It costs you nothing, absolutely nothing, but just a click of your mouse on that subscribe uh, portion. And I say good night to the world. Like I said, in particular, we have the Ketitians and the Visions all over the world. Ketitian and the Vision diaspora in Asia. There's some of you in Africa. There are some of you in Europe, and there are a whole lot of you all over North America. So I am at liberty to say good night. I can say good morning, and I will also say good evening, because one of such greetings uh, will be applicable uh, to the region in which you now find yourself. And for the first time, as we do have first timers each time around, and I want to welcome you uh, for the first time and just to inform you that Straight Talk is a public service program that facilitates and promotes free expression on all issues of national interest, be they legal, be they environmental, be they technological, social, economic and or 
political issues on Straight Talk, you do have a forum to express yourselves freely. Let us continue to strive uh, to get St. Kitts and Nevis back to that enviable position of being one of the freest countries in the entire world. On this program, we try to raise the level of national consciousness. We try to raise the level of national discourse by alerting our people to their rights, to their responsibilities, and certainly to their obligations. My name is Ian Patches Lybird, and I give Almighty God thanks for blessing me with the opportunity to join you in conversation on yet another occasion. And I always pledge as your host to remain an untiring advocate of truthfulness. As I always am reminded of the words of one of my favorite hymns. I, I'm, I'm just forced to, to, to use them each time. We are called to be God's prophets, speaking for the truth and right. Stand firm for godly justice, bringing evil things to light. So let us seek the courage needed, our high calling to fulfill, that we may all, all may know the blessing of doing or the doing of God's will. My Straight Talk family, absolutely, absolutely nothing is watered down on this program. And this is especially for the first timers. We do not try to make the program more interesting through omission or exaggeration. Neither by sensationalism or creating excitement because my straight dog family, we don't do these things, especially at the expense of accuracy, the truth, because we lean on the facts. As I consider it my duty to always present the unvarnished truth, I call it, the plain truth, especially when it comes to governance in this country. And we're joined with people all across the Federation, all across the diaspora, all around the world. And my straight dog family, there are some who will agree with the positions of truth that are advanced on straight talk. And there's some who will disagree. And we can live with that because we promote diversity, diversity of views, because we are a different people. But please, let's not start to become disagreeable. And in the process, let's just thank Almighty God for helping us to understand, oh, how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Let us hope and pray for the day when we all, all will sing his praise together. So welcome once again. And I thank all those who share the link. Please continue to do so. And for the first time, as I must also inform you that Straight Talk is a public service program. It is a participative program, I meant to say. And by that I mean we include your calls and your emails. And if you're so minded calling, the numbers are listed on your screen. 663-6672 or 646-829-6672. And there are those who like what I call it the cloak of anonymity. So we give you access via our email platform and that Address is straight talk patches. That's one word S T R A I G H T T A L K P A T C H E S at gmail.com. And we say a special welcome to our straight talk junior brigade, young Dwayne Tristan Shama. I saw Shama a couple of days ago going to school, and guess what? Uh, I saw young Travis who came up to me yesterday and today told me he's in third grade and doing well and uh, I saw him there and said oh, isn't that Patches and yes it's Travis I promise I'll hail him tonight so I didn't see Travon his brother 
Uh, for a moment, I thought they were twins, but I <laughs> just learned they're not. But Travis and Trevon of Pond's Extension, Rucosta over there in South Carolina. Trust that you continue to make that special honors list and do your parents and grandparents well. Kevin Hanley over there in Nevis and Jamal from Anguilla. Trust I didn't miss any of my young brigade who I'm forced to, I am, I must call them, heal them every night. I must also heal the special lady in St. Louis. And for those, on a solemn note too, uh, I've lost loved ones, I'm not aware of them. If I don't listen to a particular radio station at mornings, I miss all these death announcements. But there are some people who may have lost loved ones and we extend our heartfelt condolences to those families. And just to remind you that death is a process. And for our first timers as well, we, we our, the format of, of for each show is it's a particular format we use in that we consider our observations in review, after which a, dissert, a dissertation or what I call a short thesis is presented. And believe it or not, young Travis asks me, what's my thesis for tonight? <laughs> you know, and he really, really uh, surprised me, but uh, I had to give him pretty early. And my thesis for tonight is titled, The Principle Stakes and challenges, no freedom of entry by all people to St. Kitts and Nevis. You've heard of the, 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 the back door, so to speak, uh, approach again being used by uh, the July administration and come next week, intended to, to sign off on this revised treaty of the revised treaty of Chagaramas. But we'll get to that momentarily, but our observations in review are an integral part of straight talk, and after which we move right into our thesis. Then we include your calls, of course, and your emails, as mentioned earlier. So we ensure, or we try to ensure, or try to allow your full participation in straight talk, because straight talk is about you, my family. And... The time when we review, we highlight the current issues and do some reflection, we then ask a few questions and what was accomplished then and what was, uh, uh, what was changed since and what can be expected. And how could I forget uh, Mrs. Olivia Griffin, I promise, and I was asked to heal you over there in Toronto. And all my Toronto massive, all my North American massive, I should say. And again, my straight talk family, we, what about the Queen in Texas as well? well? My first observation is in the form of an apology. And on Monday last, I congratulated the debating team from Nevis for winning the Leeward Islands debating competition. And surely I didn't misspeak. I must have misspoke spoken because my good friend from Davis called me on two occasions and reminded me that Davis won the championship not four times but twelve times and I must humbly apologize to all divisions and in, in particular to the Nevis uh, debating society if that's the term I can use I apologize and that the Nevis team has won 12 times and not four, as I apparently stated. I must so follow in an issue within the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force. And I know this uh, lady sergeant, well, she is a former police, but the, the, the uh, immigration department was severe. Billionaires, I think that's the term he used. And she was unceremoniously sent home. And strange but true, we understand that 
Clara is much older than her, but Miss Welcome, you just be strong, and I know God will provide. He does provide for all of us. But I'm following that's immigration. And I'm following the issue within the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force. Uh, surrounding this inspector who has failed all his polygraph tests, and he have did several, even local and even overseas. But this inspector is the minister's blue-eyed boy. He started as a constable when the C.G. Walwyn promoted him to corporal when he selected him as his driver. C.G. Walwyn, Walwyn, I'm told, traveled and he realized that drivers for commissioners of police are sergeants, so he promoted him to sergeant. And in a few years, he reached inspector. As a matter of fact, he went, we understand, as a supernumerary uh, to Taiwan, studied for five years, came back as an inspector. And Drew intended, he intended to appoint him as commissioner of police because he, in, he was, in fact, in charge of Drew's, Dr. Drew Lai's security detail during the elections in particular. But he failed all his interviews for assistant commissioner as well. And he wants to appoint him, he, meaning July, wants to appoint this inspector to superintendent. He's off island now on a short course. And we are watching that. We're also looking at the fact that no force personnel officer has been appointed to act and or permanently since July sent home Peter Govaya on retirement. And that's not good. We know that there's a particular lady being lobbied for and we are looking at that as well. But I want to ask the Prime Minister, please let the police do its job. Please stay out of the micromanagement of the police. And your inspector, blue-eyed boy Edwards, he's not at superintendent level at this time. He's failed his exams. So I don't know, why don't you let the course run the course run, that the course of things run in the police force, Dr. Juba. We are following all these issues and many issues in the police force. We know that you have disbanded the, the young boys uh, and you know, you've, you've brought back in this magic, whatever it's called. But July, please stay out of the operations of the police force. We are asking you, that's not good for crime fighting. Yes, to my listeners in Keon, especially this particular gentleman who makes sure he calls me and this lady sends me a WhatsApp each time because she's concerned and I am concerned as well that there is deafening silence about the quality of the water found in Kion by Bede. And I am challenged not to stop speaking about it until we get answers about the water quality. And this is paramount. And again, with the greatest respect, I'm disappointed. And I hold the manager and water engineer, Cromwell Williams. I hold you accountable, Cromwell. You, you are a model civil servant and I expect better of you and you must come to the country if you have not yet because I have not heard you and if you have come to the country send the release to Straight Talk so I will read it I want to tell the country 
that the water that was found is of good quality for consumption, for human consumption. The Soka engineer Conris is back, I hope by now, he has returned from his joy ride to Barcelona at the expense of taxpayers. And we ask ourselves, why would the Soka engineer attend the Mobile Congress, Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, except to draw down on a per diem and no doubt rack up advantage miles. But he has an obligation to tell the country how does his attendance at this Mobile World Congress to deal with G5 and the, the AI, artificial intelligence, intelligence, how does that benefit St. Kitts and Nevis Soka engineer? These are things we need to know. And he has returned. And I trust that you have addressed the issues you've left behind that border on criminality. And I'm saying this according to your own chief legal advisor. But the issues being raised by residents in Keon, we will flag them each program. Because such issues about water quality can result in the poor health, sickness, and death of those who consume the water if the quality is not good. They are serious. And the member or the Minister of Health and Prime Minister and Constituency Representative, July, the Soka Engineer, Congress, and the Qualified Engineer, Cromwell is a highly qualified engineer and manager, the only hydrogeologist, I believe, in the country at this time. And all are quiet. And I submit, the country is entitled to be provided with a report. And that has to be part of good governance, transparency, and accountability. And I'm saddened when these people are quiet and not living up to their obligations. Why isn't the Bureau of Standards involved in this critical issue of testing the quality of water made available, or to be made available, I should say, for human consumption? Is this because the Bureau of Standards identified the arsenic contamination in the Shadwell too, that well that was drilled by bead? My straight talk family, I have been asked to flag this by the residents in Keon. And until we get answers, I commit to them that I will flag this issue of water quality that ought to be satisfied or ought to be, satis ought to be, be satisfied in WHO guidelines. And we ask the question, who has tested this water? We understand it's bead. But why should bead police itself? Why should we or anybody for that matter trust bead? And these are the questions. The question of desalination has not been answered. Why wasn't the, 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 the procurement, the request for proposals, the solicitation not published? Why is this contract for two or a two million gallon plant, why it has it been handed to the royal utilities? Why? Government methods to procure goods and services are prescribed by legislation. So how could you hand this contract for two million gallon desalination plant to the royal utilities? Is it still on the desk of the Attorney General Garth Lucifer Wilkin? For his ratification. This, as I said, paints a picture of these elected and some Ill unelected and unelectable officials making decisions behind closed doors. And that creates a perception of corruption. And we will keep flagging these issues because they are not good. For the country. And my Shredog family, those are my 
observations in review for tonight. And I want to move right into my thesis. And I mentioned earlier that it is titled The Principal Stakes and Challenges. No freedom of entry by all people to St. Kitts and Nevis. And one thing this incumbent Labour administration has done quite well since assuming office is to totally disregard the electorate by the actions or in inactions for that matter. And in the process, they have confirmed that this July administration is certainly not a government of the people, for the people, and or by the people. And this position is borne out every day. And I saw the, the, the headlines in the St. Kitts Nevis Observer newspaper, the cover page. It provides an indisputable description of this incompetent administration on its cover page of last week's edition. And when I saw this, I had to say, wow, this is an apt description of this government. Heartless and reckless. With the choir boy on the head, front page, Garth Lucifer Wilkin. And I guess he made it because of the tabling of the now infamous resolution by Street of Family. The infamous resolution in the National Assembly which he tabled to hike their salaries without justification. And it continues to stimulate discussion in every nook and cranny in our Twin Island Federation, my straight dog family. And I heard July today, and, you know, it, it, it saddens me, my straight dog family. It saddens me. Trust me, he does. And I'm sure this is a sentiment expressed by many, many people in St. Kitts. But here is the Attorney General at a public function and elsewhere in Parliament indicating that he thinks money can buy good behavior. You either have it or you don't have it. You either have inculcated those values or you haven't. No amount of money can do that trick to you unless you're already disposed to that kind of behavior. Give me more, or else I will be corrupt. That is what he's saying. Pay us more, or the ministers in this government will be corrupt. And they're sitting beside him, not understanding what he's inferring and what the logical interpretation of that is. Well, I'm sure our Attorney General gave a private practice and came. How come Delana Bart gave a private practice and came? How come Dennis Merchant gave a private practice and came? Because for them, Jason Hamilton, Nisbet from Nevis, they all came out of private practices and they came to make a contribution to the development of their country. Attorney General, it is not always about money, maybe for you, but not for the majority of us. Those hard-working civil servants at customs and elsewhere who have not taken one bribe in the years of service, you are no raising in the public square that unless you ain't give them money, they are going to be corrupted. And yes, my should dog family, 
It's not about money for many of us. It's about public service. And they use the back door, according to this comrade, who is very assertive and not afraid to speak her mind. And she posted this. Let's read Dog family. They use the back door, according to this comrade. And a message reads, it's not about the messenger, but the message. The resolution was brought through the back door in a similar manner to the abnormal modus operandi. Labor, she continues, why have you become very comfortable with behavior of incompetence? Government is continuous. Yes, self-serving, she continues. Imagine there are persons who are parading as honorable men in agreement with the salary increases. Wickedness is running amok in the Federation. Premier Bradshaw is beating them from the grave. They are these honorable men. Reads that Facebook post from Carmen Gwinnett. Staunch Labour supporter. And I know she's going no place from Labour. And I fully agree with her that Bradshaw is beating them from the grave. And I can hear Papa Bradshaw scolding this bunch of this honorable men, all lacking principle. Yes, principle. The basic concept or rule that explains or controls how the unrestricted movement of all people within the CARICOM region will work when the revised Treaty of Shagaramus is further revised, my straight dog family. Roosevelt Skerritt, the Prime Minister of Dominica, revealed the basic truth that July was hiding from the country. Roosevelt Skerritt revealed the basic truth that explains how the freedom of movement will work. And Skerritt said this months ago at the end of the Conference of Heads, which was convened on the 50th anniversary of CARICOM in Port of Spain, Trinidad. And he said this. On the issue of um, free movement, we uh, deliberated on this matter. We have taken a decision uh, to uh, seek to have uh, the free movement of all categories uh, of people to live and work. Uh, obviously, there are some legal issues that we have to examine, and we are giving the legal people um, some months uh, to examine those legal issues um, and, and to ensure that we can come to us by by 30th of March um, to, to 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 take a definitive definitive position on this. And and so we understand that there will be some challenges for some, um, but we are committed to this position. Um, in addition to the free movement, there is certain contingent rights that will be associated with the free movement of people. Uh, access to primary health care and emergency health care. Access to basic education, pre-primary, primary, and secondary education. Um, uh, of course, we have this social security agreement in place already that people can benefit from. But we believe this is a, a fundamental part of the integration architecture and at 50 we could not leave Trinidad and Tobago um, and not speak about the core of the integration movement that is people's ability to move freely within the Caribbean community and, and I think we would have we, we would have served and we have served the community well at this meeting by arriving at that decision um, and we hope that to see that it will be implemented by the 30th of March 2024. Um, so this is great news. I, I think, um, I believe with all of the issues that we have discussed and the, the number of decisions we've taken, this is the decision that we've taken at this conference. And I believe 
um, the founding fathers are smiling from heaven um, that the present generation of leaders were bold enough to be able to arrive at a decision going forward. And this was the Shudok family from July 2023. Yes, July 2023. Some nine, eight months ago, just about. And it, no discussion with the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. And what is at stake? What is the financial involvement of Senkit Nevis in this decision to facilitate the freedom of movement of all people across the region? And Mia Motley, the lead minister on this issue, said this. We are now moving beyond just the freedom of movement of skills, the freedom of movement of people. Out of an abundance of caution and to be sure-footed, there are some aspects of the treaty that will require amendment. And therefore, we are giving ourselves between now and the 30th of March 2024 to make the amendment. The 30th of March 2024. That's in about two weeks, my street dog family. And there are challenges. The people of St. Kitts Nevis elected a new government in August 2022. And without discussion, with the people who elected them. Ten months thereafter, an inexperienced leader who came onto the scene found himself in a situation of being faced with a very important and far-reaching decision that needed great mental or physical effort and wide consultation with the people of St. Kitts Nevis. Prior to committing to affixing his signature to the latest revision to the revised Treaty of Chagaramos that would allow freedom of movement of all the people of the region, nothing, absolutely nothing said to the people. And we all remember the original Treaty of Chagaramos, my street dog family, which was signed in July, on 4th July to be exact, uh, in 1973, Errol Barrow was one of the signatories. Forbes Burnham was another by Straight Dog family. Michael Manley, he too was a signatory by Straight Dog family. And of course, Dr. Eric Williams. And on July the 4th, 1973, the Caribbean Community CARICOM was established to deepen regional integration. Therefore, last year, the region celebrated 50 years since the signing of the Treaty of Chagaramos and the accomplishments of CARICOM, which is revered as the oldest surviving integration movement in the developing world, my straight dog family. But unlike the European Union, membership in CARICOM is open to any other state or territory or country of the Caribbean region, that is, in the opinion of the conference, able and willing to exercise the rights and assume the obligations of membership. But the tre Treaty on European Union sets out the conditions in Article 49 and principles in Article 6, subsection 1, to which any country wishing to become a member of the European Union must conform. But in CARICOM, as we said, it's the opinion of the conference and commitment to be willing and able to exercise the rights and assume the obligations of the membership. And there's an obligation to have full and free or unrestricted access 
to every country in the CARICOM region. Unlike the European Union, there is no accession criterion. In the EU, certain criteria must be met for accession. And these criteria are known as the Copenhagen Criteria. And they were established by the Copenhagen European Council in 1993 and strengthened by the Madrid European Council in 1995. And they include stability of institutions, guaranteeing democracy, the rule of law, human rights, and respect for and protection of minorities, a functioning market economy, and the ability to cope with competitive pressure and market forces within the EU, the ability to take on the obligations of membership, including the capacity, capacity to effectively implement the rules, standards, and policies that make up the body of European Union law, the ACRIS, as it's called, and adherence to the aims of political, economic, and monetary union. And my straight talk family, the European Union is an international economic and political alliance of some 27 member countries, 19 of which use the euro as their official currency. And believe it or not, its roots date back to 1952, when six countries founded the European Coal and Steel Community to boost economic growth and ease post-World War II tensions. And by the mid-60s, the ESSC merged with two other organizations and remained the European communities. It served as the legal predecessor to today's European Union, which was officially born in 1993. And the European Council is comprised of EU member heads of state or government, the Commission President and the Council President. The EU Council meets at summits to discuss EU legislation and sets the EU's broader political agenda. My straight dog family, the Commission has representatives from each member country who propose new laws for the EU and monitor the implementation of existing laws. Commissioners are nominated by the Council and approved by Parliament. But when a country applies to join the EU, the Commission determines if it's prepared to become a member. It recommends whether the Council should open negotiations or certain economic or governance reforms first needed to be made. I recall there were certain criteria such as your employment rate, inflation rate, the, the, the level of your currency at the time when you are making application. But my sweet talk family, the development of the European Union has been long and coming and any European country that agrees to promote the EU's common values, respect for human dignity and human rights, freedom, democracy, equality and the rule of law and meet certain criteria or criteria or certain conditions I should say referred to as the as I said before, the Copenhagen criteria, which is eligible to apply for membership. But my straight talk family, accession negotiations, and apart from that, the EU budget for pre-accession assistance is 14.16 billion euros. What's our budget in terms of this unfettered access to every country in the region. And my straight dog family, it does take some time to get membership. And it's not common for countries to leave the EU 
such as the United Kingdom, officially did in 2020. Although, Brexit might be the most well-known EU departure. It's not the only one in history because Greenland, a limited self-governing Danish territory, originally joined in 1973 as an integrated part of Denmark, but not a member state. It withdrew from the EU then called the European Communities in 1985 following a referendum. A referendum. So getting back to CARICOM and the current issue though, I submit that national politics must play a role in whether we move towards agreeing to the unrestricted access of all people to all member countries within CARICOM, inclusive of St. Kitts and Nevis. And I say this because I heard the host refer to a Larry. Someone said that he is the St. Kitts and Nevis ambassador to CARICOM. And the voice really sounded like his, that I heard this morning in passing. He was a national radio. And he attempted to give the people of St. Kitts a lecture on regional integration. I found him condescending. I found his comments were absurd. And I found that he demonstrated to us that as a St. Kitts Nevis ambassador to CARICOM, he is living in a bubble. His lecture, for example, about regional integration being around for 60 years came across as if he was unaware of the true history of the West Indies or West Indian Federation that was short-lived or was a short-lived political union that existed from the 3rd of January 1958 to the 31st of May 1962. And I won't go into the details, but it is a, it's in, 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 in reference to the various islands in the Caribbean that were part of the British Empire, including Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados, Jamaica, and those leeward and Whitman Islands came together to form the Federation with its capital in Port of Spain and Tobago, and Trinidad and Tobago, my straight up family. And we remember our late Sir Robert Llewellyn Bradshaw was the first Minister of Finance. But the express intention of the Federation was to create a political unit that would become independent from Britain, a single state similar to Canada or the Federation of Australia or the Federation of Rhodesia, remember back then, my street of family. But before that could happen, the Federation collapsed due to internal political conflicts over how it would be governed or function viably. The formation of the West Indian Federation was encouraged by the United Kingdom as well, and also requested by West Indian nationalists, my street dog family. But that was then, but now, my street dog family. Look at now, my dear street dog family. Yes, many will boast of 50 years of CARICOM integration. But is there true integration among the 15 member states of CARICOM and the five associated members? That's a pertinent question. We are now hearing of the pending membership of Martinique, Guadeloupe, and Curacao. Yes, we have established some critical organizations, we must agree, like the Caribbean Court of Justice, the CCJ. But how many countries have signed on to the CCJ? You've established the Caribbean Disaster and Emergency Agency, CDEMA. The Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFA. Also the Caribbean Institute for Meteorology and Hydrology, the CIMH. And yes, we talk about economic integration. But is that really true? My street dog family, fast track to our current situation and consider the cost of economic integration. 
Yes, we may be able to cite some benefits, but economic integration, I submit, has costs. Diversion of trade is a cost. Because that is, trade can be diverted from non members to members, even if it is economically detrimental for the member state. Erosion of our national sovereignty, my straight dog family. And employment shifts and reductions. Because members of economic unions typically are required to adhere to rules on trade, monetary policy, and fiscal policies established by an unelected external policy-making body. And that's how our national sovereignty become eroded. Economic integration can cause companies to move their production operations to areas within an economic union that have cheaper labor prices. My street dog family. Conversely, employees can move to areas with better wages and employment opportunities like St. Kitts Nevis that boasts the highest minimum wage in the OECS. We have agreed, yes, on a common external tariff and the elimination of trade barriers and deep political coordination. But how could anyone say that there is economic integration when there is no agreement among CARICOM on fiscal policies? And this lady, my straight dog family, this lady whom I know very well usually makes some great contributions on talk radio. Though, I will hasten to confess that many times I have found myself at variance with some of her views, my straight dog family. I have found myself at variance with some of her views. But I do concur with this view expounded by this lady. Um, thank you for bringing up this topic. And I think that um, it's a pity, I must say, that this is not given a sort of a national consultative process, you know, for everyone to be able to listen, uh, have, have a discussion, you know, with the government. Because over the years, you know, we have had several of these sort of things. For example, you know, 1958-62, we had the federal government, um, Jamaica did a referendum and decided to pull out because... There was the, what was said was that the small islands would come and basically swamp um, Jamaica. And then when Jamaica pulled out, um, Eric Williams from Trinidad and Tobago said, well, one from ten leaves not. So they pulled out. And they were hoping that we would have a federation of the eight, but that didn't work out. However, over the years, we have the OECS, and then we have the wider CARICOM. And the OECS has, um, has been quite good in my view, in terms of the func functional cooperation mm -hmm. um, within these islands. And uh, in that respect, one of the key things, of course, is our single currency. Yes. And some of these centuries um, had left this single currency and then now afterwards wanted to come back. And so a few years ago, there was um, a push by the wider CARICOM to do a single currency for the whole CARICOM. And fortunately, our wise men in the OECS say, well, we have our own currency. I mean, you four countries, larger countries, you can join together and see what you can do and let us see how it works. Of course, they never did that. And up to now, you know, you have Barbados, Trinidad. Well, Barbados has always been stable, but Trinidad, Jamaica, Guyana, they never came together to do anything of their own in that way. Um, the points that have been made is that, in fact, right now, there is a lot of, particularly between the OES, OECS and other CARICOM countries, there's a lot of movement uh, in terms of skilled persons and other persons and what have you. But the issue to where 
will allow free and full, which is a different thing from just a skilled and the, the particular countries um, allowing that. So we have to be very mindful about that. Uh, we're a country of about 20, not even 60,000 persons, but then we have a good relationship within the OECS. But the CARICOM, that is a bigger issue. So I think that is something that needs more discussion. And when I'm hearing that they're supposed to sign this on the 15th of March, so it's coming to effect what? On the end of March? I, I don't know how practical we are, we, are, we are here. But I think we should go the way of Antigua. Thank you. All right, Colin, thank you. Yeah, thank yes, you so much my for family. Contribution yes. To the program. I mean, and when I ask about the free movement Excuse just today, July, spoke in a language known as gibberish, meaning his response, his words, and thus his sentences have no meaning whatsoever. My straight talk family, when you listen to July, his responses and comments make you really, really make you want to sin your soul my straight dog family. When I ask the question about the free, free movement that he's signing on to, without consultation with the country, he said this. A fundamental pillar of the police service to the people of the issue of full free movement and nationals, we've seen media reports regarding Antigua and Barbuda's position Bermuda, Barbados. What is think is the new business position on the full free movement of American nationals? Right. So I, I want to say that that, of course, is a discussion that was held. But think is the new business position is that in, we have been, you know, part, in, anything we do will be in the best strategic interest of think. So let me put that forward. Nothing we will do, will be, we will do the detriment of things. And it's on the migration issue, in terms of Haiti as you ask, or whether it's on the issue of free movement. So St. Kitts and Nevis's position is, you know, we are obviously asking for more data, more information, how will this be implemented, when our own issues come forward, or will this affect St. Kitts and Nevis. Those are the discussions going on. But in principle, you would want to say integrated nation. I mean, region. However, it has to be done in a way where each country will see better, not be at the, you know, in a worse position, so to put it, or in a position where the citizens are not convinced that it's to the benefit of the country. And therefore, we are looking at it closely and we are monitoring it. But to say, I think it's a nervous is. You know, it's still part of the process, but we will be a responsible partner in all of it. But we are making sure that nothing that is done will be to the detriment of our and, by extension, to the detriment of the region. What is he saying, my this, this family? What has he said? What will St. Kitts and Nevis do? Dula is the question. What? And it's to do with what detrimental and nonsense now, you're uh, what talking are about. Being taken what to will St. Kitts and Nevis do? Back. Was the question, uh, uh, July. That's the question. And I run the risk of being considered insular. But when one considers the currency rate of exchange, for example, for the guy in his dollar, if I recall, one guy in his dollar is about 13 Eastern Caribbean cents, EC cents. And for the Jamaican dollar, it's about 17 EC cents. 17 EC cents. So because of the strength of the Eastern Caribbean dollar, the pilgrimage, I call it, or the journey from St. Kitts, Nevis, into another Caribbean, Caribbean country like Jamaica or Guyana for that matter, although it has just found oil. The journey where persons would leave St. Kitts 
to go in search of new or expanded meaning about themselves or a higher standard of living than here in St. Kitts and Nevis. Through the experience of work in these countries is rather unlikely. And I'm sure you will agree. Because such a pilgrimage would not lead to a personal transformation after which the pilgrims, if I can use that term, meaning the citizens, would return to their daily life at home in St. Kitts better off. If they journey to Jamaica, they will return poorer. Yes. So the rush will head to these two islands and one lovely paradise which must be protected. July. The people of St. Kitts Nevis must oppose this unrestricted access to our economic integration due to concerns over loss of our sovereignty, lack of jobs, housing, crime, and of course, the overstressing of our education system and the already deteriorating health system. My sweet dog family, are things and issues we must consider. Jamaica, in 1962, held a referendum to leave the West Indies Federation. And as you heard outlined earlier, Dr. Williams made this popular proposition. He said, one from ten leaves not. Well, we in St. Kitts and Nevis must demand consultation with the people. And I agree. In recent time, I've been agreeing with Iro. Good morning. Good morning, Devon. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Uh, um, I hope that um, when the Prime Minister comes on tomorrow for the round table, that there is some kind of clarification or statement opposition of St. Kitts and Nevis that is, is presented. Um, this, this light came out of the blue. And it seemed like it had been, I don't know if it was leaked or whatever, but it certainly came out in the press for us rather than our leaders. And I think um, it's only Antigua that essentially is given a position on it, a public um, position on it. I suspect that nothing has been finalized um, that what would be done on, on the 16th may just be a memorandum of understanding yeah. to, yeah, right, to, to pursue this and not necessarily, not necessarily go to full implementation because I don't see how this can be implemented just so by March 34th, you know? Um, because it has serious implications for, for, for us, but certainly the smaller island, right? And so I would think that um, the people would be um, educated, uh, consulted, all of that before any, a drastic measure like that is introduced. So let, let, let's hope to get that um, tomorrow. What I would suggest... My Shizok family, why would we have to speculate? Why should we have to speculate? July came with his roundtable conference today. And till this moment, he has not said what would St. Kitts and Nevis do. We shouldn't have to speculate on that. And I suggest that we must send a clear message to July to be transparent as his secret plans that have been now exposed will derive one result and one result only according to this lady who was straightforward and assertive about her position that presents or represents a lot of us. This whole thing is not but a mess. This six months is good. Thank you, Dr. Kilman, 
Oh, but Mr. Joe has to be just train the young one never coming. This is going to mash up the players. He said, some good, it's sound like a trick and a mess. Eh? How could you do people that? You cannot do that. Send guitar at a skill, people. When you drive in a car, you can't look down at the stairs and really have to look ahead and see the oncoming traffic. You say it's going be no good in the long run. It's going to mash up the whole place. Saying it need to pull out of that. The six months is good. You got enough time, you got enough criminal, you can't get things under the control and you're going to bring in people when you look, you don't know who, I mean, this is ridiculous. This is the most dumbest thing I ever hear. Three movements, with settlement. Six months is good. You can't even control them because when they come there, you're going back. What you want to put people to this? They need to come to the people and let them know if they're ready for this because how I look at it, in the long run, ain't going to benefit none of these oil or nothing. And I like what Antigua do. They pull out. And the next thing I want to say? Yes. This is what Antigua has done. One thing, they have made their position clear for the whole whole world to understand. We have concerned that if we were to allow the unrestricted flow of CARICOM nationals into the country, that it will imperil, among other things, our social services. Sending states do not want to provide any type of assistance to a place like Antigua and Barbuda. Remember, we do not have gold, silver, bauxite, oil. We do not have it. We are optimistic that the heads would accept Antigua and Barbuda's requests and pleadings with respect to uh, utilizing the skills regime, maintaining it in its current status. So we anticipate that those who are not um, going the route of full free movement will adopt and maintain the skills regime. So next week, my street talk family is decision time and Dr. July has not come to the people he was asked a straightforward question today and he evaded the question as he does every question so the sinister plans of July and his cabinet have all been exposed and the people of St. Nevis but not only demand consultations in every community. Let's get some town hall meetings. Tell us what you're going to do. You're not going to sneak your signature on that revised treaty. Or perhaps it's already there. We don't know. And I will go further, my street dog family, and say perhaps we must also demand a referendum as well to determine the principle, the stakes, and the challenges and vote no to freedom of entry by all people to live and work without restriction in St. Kitts and Nevis. That's my story tonight. My Sweet Dog family and I am not going to change it. I will open the lines and entertain your calls and your emails. And if you're so minded to call, the numbers are 663-6672 and or 646-829-6672. I always like to implore you that when I open the lines, and I'll do so momentarily, I anticipate that you will respect others. And of course, to achieve that, you must first respect yourselves. 
Let us try to be fair to all concerned and let us try to build goodwill and better friendships. And let us ensure that the things we say and or do will be beneficial to all concerned. For those as well who like the cloak of anonymity, our email address is straighttalkpatches at gmail.com. But let us ensure that the things we say and or do are in the process of saying and or doing those things. Let us, my straight dog family, strive to build a kinder, gentler St. Kitts and Nevis. With that said, at 909, you go to the line and Mr. say, Bartes, good, night. <laughs> good night, Mr. Bibleman. You are right on the ball. You open the bat tonight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, Psalm 34. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and delivered him from all his troubles. Psalm 41. Blessed is the man that considereth the poor. In the time of trouble, oh, yes. the Lord shall deliver him. Mm-hmm. Now, in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 22, that is, here I say here, I want you to read it, you know. I want, that is, I want you to read it. Here we are here. Verse 22. It says, Rob not the poor, because he is poor. In their, in their fiction, because he is poor, don't rub him. Now, verse above chapter 21, verse 13. Here it is. If you cover up your ears, who ever cover up the ears? His ears. The cry of the poor. He also himself. But when he cries, the Lord will not hear him. So, Mr. Patrick, and I'm reading from. God's word. And I give it to you as a script about the poor. When you consider nothing but the poor people, you won't kill them off. But look here. God is in the midst, Mr. Patted. The creator of the whole universe is in the mid and he's in the midst. He is. He's right there. Okay. In the car for the poor people. And I'm saying tonight, I am our now we own. We can do as we like. And this is the last thing I'm going to say. There was a man in Daniel chapter 5. Near Belshazzar. He did a kingdom. And he believed he was the biggest man in Babylon. He brings all the golden weapons. And he had the conquer miner. And they drink out of them. And when Belshazzar done, 
Belchazo went to sleep. And when he get up, he see a hand writing on the wall. And he start to shake and tremble. Okay. He want to know what's going on. God was in the midst. And so, when he went to kill all the soldiers and all the him and them, Daniel was in the midst. Okay. And Daniel tell him what is the writing mean. And when he come down to God, Daniel tell him, the writing is it. Me and I no know. You are well in the balancing and all wanting. Okay. And so, Mr. Patel, a lot of people right now, they are well in the balance that so they're doing all kinds of stupidness. But the Lord will thank his people. Thank his people, pray. Thank his people, call okay. upon God. Okay, my brother. God here and answered prayer. Good night, Mr. Patel. Good night, my dear brother. Thank you for your spiritual intervention. You really got into your sermon tonight. But thanks always, uh, the Bible man, and start our program, your spiritual intervention. Patches help out Carl with this point. The Governor General got a massive raise. All at once, about 50% specifically, the Governor General's salary jumped from $12,650 to $18,850, reads this email. This other email reads, Dear Patches, Margaret Thatcher used to refer to the management of household budgets by women as housewife economics. <laughs> Very interesting uh, position. Sean, you asked a very pertinent question this morning on the WinFM why the AG had to hide certain important information in Parliament from the public. My answer to you is very simple. He is dishonest, and that does not speak well to his character as an Attorney General, is this other email. I always listen to Dwyer's commentary giving advice to the government, but they're just not heading or heeding any of his suggestions. Earlier he called on them to remove some of those reserved parking lots in town, and particularly on Church Street. But ironically, more and more are being given out. The taxi bus driver and advisor to the Prime Minister was recently given one. The other day he had a long line of traffic held up on Church Street for a good length of time, trying to fit in his bus good in position. Many of the angry drivers as they pass by sneered contemptuously at him. Dr. Drew, not talking you on, not, not talking you on at all, not taking you on at all, that should be perhaps, Dwyer, no matter how you falsely uh, praising him, reads this other email. I'm taking the emails, my straight dog family, since they are piling up on me. DPP, you are in the sphere of the Attorney General and function was a pivot on him. 
Are you not ashamed that after your long grandstanding, you are now stooge and puppet up to the AG? It is quite obvious now that you were specifically chosen to be a yes man of government and to prejudice certain or prejudice against certain people in the Federation. The evidence is palpable, Mr. DPP, based on what you said first in your inaugural speech, address and interviews with the various media houses. Now many are calling you all sorts of derogatory names. Are you not feeling ashamed of yourself? You know, found yourself in uncharted waters with all the bombastic talk you had. The Attorney General has cut you right down. My suggestion is that you resign because the people of this federation no longer repose their confidence in you. Read this other email. Uh, let's go to the lines and say, I thank you for holding caller. You're live. Are you there, caller? Good night. Yes, I am here. Good night. Yeah, good night. Everyone. Good night. Good night. Purchase. Good night, sir. Um, I'm revisiting the situation where the government ministers get a raise and also to the uh, lower class of a uh, civil servant in the Federation. And uh, I am going back to, and I need an interaction. The, the, when the uh, motion was tabled for every three years, government ministers get a raise. Could it, ha could it have been interpreted that as long as they serve, as long as that administration served for three years, they could get a raise rather than what happening now, fast forward. After X and X amount of years, um, unity administration, they didn't vouch for a raise in terms of skip that. Well, unity administration lasts at least seven years. And in between that seven years, they could have uh, raised. But due to circumstances, they did not. But now this new administration comes in. Do they interpret after so long a raise has not occurred from day of establishment when government could have taken a raise? It is too soon for them to be in power to take a raise, and they should have taken that raise three years after, should they last that time. I don't think that that understanding is clarified. And I think there should be a revisit of that ocean or amendment to make a detailed clarification of that time of raise. I think they should have taken a raise three years after. On the same day that three years come, they could have automatically get that raise because it was put in. What is the percentage to decide? That remains to be known. We'll, we'll call I will yield I'm, there. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, uh, but it doesn't necessarily follow that. I think the, the legislation speaks to a salary review every three years, but it doesn't necessarily follow that the salary review review commission once established will recommend there is because it has to be 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 determined by lots of different factors. But it's just that the mm -hmm. salary the the salary review commission act speaks to reviewing the salaries uh parliamentarians every three years. And the last time and I think that was the first time it met uh in twenty nineteen. So really it should have met in twenty twenty two or 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 the a committee, a commission should have been appointed in 2022. Uh, that's when the, the, the Gigi, he said the Gigi reminded him uh, that this was done. So, so rather than using the 2019 recommendations, then he should have had his own review and see what happens. I hope I explained it. I hope I didn't confuse you. <laughs> but but, but I, I understand that. But I am looking at the fact that this new administration mm. just came in, not just over a year now, 
Should they? Should they have? Should they? In which they are not as yet. Make that recommendation. Three years after they are in reign, they are in power. I mean, it is too soon because look at the 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 the, 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 the hike of their salary. It's not that I'm not depriving anyone who deserves a raise. But, uh, God, come on, man. I don't think they should have taken that raise or something. They should have even go two and a half years, three years, which is the minimum, the maximum, and do that because it's hard back in the country. Because look at the average people. They can't, they can't do nothing for themselves. And that is so sad. But that's just my view. That's just my take. But I think they should have. Uh, they should reverse that. Um, recall that decision. Mm-hmm. And if they are strong, if they are strong and they can't stay that long, then take it after three years. But not now. Because remember, the country is weak in finances. That's what I heard from the administration. They came in and it was weak, and after a sudden. They become strong now. So at least everyone should have get a full fair share according to the economy and inflation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, uh, having heard the Dr. July today, he certainly is not going to reverse that. But we understand, and that's the general view, uh, it ought to, have been, ought to have been on the basis of performance and they have done nothing it's the first time i i i can i can recall that a government has been elected and night two years not one thing has been done in the country and that's very strange and we don't know when anything will be done because the economy is just stagnant just stagnant my street dog family when they were debating the social levy bill reads this email. The member for Nevis 9 said in his presentation that social security has made some bad investments in the past and that which all of us know is true. One example is Beacon Heights. The speaker rudely and disrespectfully shut him up stating that he must stick to the bill that is before the House. Also, when Harris was speaking on the said bill, she did the same thing to him. I do not understand what is wrong with this woman. Here is she, an immature and fledgling speaker with 18 months' experience, want to correct Jeffers and Harris, who, when combined has myriad years of experience in the National Assembly being chastised by a rookie speaker. Madam Speaker, stop your boastful attitude and have some respect. Reads that email. This other email reads, Hi Patches, I am reached out because my disgust with the health care of our citizens uh, Received in St. Kitts and Nevis. And today's round table with Dr. Jew left me beyond disappointed. I am apolitical. I have never voted in an election in St. Kitts. I moved away as a teenager. I have a father, a grandmother, two sisters and innumerable extended family members still living on the island. Beyond that, I am also a physician. JNF has not improved since I was a child, despite now three prime ministers who were previously physicians. They are those who will point to infrastructure to try to refute my statement, but the problem isn't just infrastructure. I listened to the Honorable PM talk about goals for adding renal transplants and cardiology to the available services at JNF. A new future hospital. All I could see flashing before me is an image of my great uncle. 
My great uncle broke his hip at JNF some years ago due to the negligence of staff and my straight talk family and my humble opinion. He had an eye surgery and was provided no assistance in leaving the hospital. Therefore, he fell while on the property. He then underwent orthopedic surgery at JNF. He was discharged home on a stretcher. And when he complained of increasing pain, he was told he was lazy. His doctor did not recognize this as a sign of possible infection. And by the time they did, he was septic, meaning the infection had spread throughout his body and causing diffuse organ damage. From there, his care was further mismanaged until he developed seizures and died. I say all of this to say that a CT scan offsite available of orthopedic services and perhaps any other num number of infrastructure, ad ad infrastructure advancements were not to blame. The issue was either a lack of caring as there are no consequences for poor outcomes or lack of training, not recognizing symptoms of infection, poor critical care services, nurses follow physician orders and not questioning orders when the patient's condition changes. If PM Drew is committed to improving health care in St. Kitts, he has to go back to the basics and address some of the widespread failures in the health care system. Get a pharmacy that actually carries medications the patients need. Many people are still being told to purchase necessary medications for use while hospitalized. He mentioned improving the ER to reduce waiting times or wait times, but needs to place an emphasis on diagnostic skills. Checking a, a, checking a point vital, a patient's vital signs and confirming normal mentation can't be better can't be the extent of evaluation for a person with loss of consciousness, for example. This happened to another great uncle of mine who later had a blood clot led to his untimely death. The hospital needs to have its own suite of Im imaging and lab failures. Patients leaving the hospital for treat testing is counterproductive to quality care. Often, timeliness is cast to the wind. This is a long email. Patient care should be the utmost priority of staff. Too often nurses at JNF are rude and are uncaring to patients. That is different that, than when I was growing up, but not in a good way. A family friend was in the hospital after a stroke. He soon developed bed sores because his care was so lax and nurses were not attentive to turning him to prevent this outcome. This same patient had a urinary catheter that went unnoticed for six hours. A visitor who noted no urine output over the several hours that were visiting had to alert the nurse. It was then determined that the catheter was no longer in place and the patient's bed was soaked in urine. Nurses should be trained to monitor a catheter Inter intermittently, then this could have a sign of renal failure if the catheter were appropriately inserted. Dr. Drew may say he can't make individual nurses care. However, there should be an established quality of care standard. Deviations from the standard should be to lead further to lead to further investigations by the hospital administration to identify where the breakdown in care occurred. This shouldn't be about signing fault, but about identifying areas of improvement. Another avenue to motivate nurses to do a better job would be to reward those who do and ensure that there are consequences for severe infractions. The hospital should review all poor outcomes and deaths of hospitalized patients. My great uncle suffered the fall and sepsis died preventable, of preventable causes. This should be, have prompted a review and debriefing with regard to the care he received. 
And ultimately, change should have been made to, again, improve quality of care. A, escorting patients after surgery to their transportation to avoid falls. B, review of surgical procedures performed by that physician to reduce infection rates. C, improving follow-up care so that progressing infection is not missed. C, patients should not be denied care for an inability to pay. Imaging is not provided on site and private entities can refuse to perform the necessary imaging. This is wrong, but even more appalling is the refusal to give patients their pathology results for an inability to pay. Far too long, as physicians, we have focused on quantity. We have many more doctors, and that is great. We need more specialists, particularly in the area of psychiatry and geriatrics. Not now is the time to focus on quality. I don't want anything I have written to be considered anti any of the improvements that Dr. Drew suggests. It would be great for the Senkis to develop its healthcare tourism and become a beacon for healthcare in the region. Healthcare throughout the Caribbean could use a boost. It is still hard for me to imagine those advances happening while the basics I have outlined above are still in question. My concern is that we are stepping ahead and not focusing on the plight of the everyday man who access care at the JNF. Sincerely, a concerned medical doctor. That's a long one, my sweet dog family. Carlo, are you there? Are you yeah. holding? And I'm a great, I'm, I'm apologize. That was a thesis in itself. But thank you for holding. <laughs> Very patiently. It was, that was a very interesting email. It was, I enjoyed it. It, 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 was, enjoyed it. it was, yes. yes. Mr. Patrick's greeting. Greetings, my brother. And how are you? I am peaceful. Yourself? Very good, myself. Very interesting reasoning tonight from, coming from your end. This reminds me of Job Home Waker. You remember Job Home Waker? <laughs> Been eating Job Home Waker? <laughs> I'm seeing those in ages. That's true. Yes, I am. Whenever conflict arises between material and spiritual values, the conscience plays an important role. Anyone who suffers from a guilty conscience is never free from his problems until he makes peace with his conscience. Mr. Patches, Antigua pulling out the treaty is a mature stand. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the minister of government there is showing you where he's representing his people, the nation. Because no minister of government, no part of the Caribbean, could go into CARICOM talks or OEC talks without the fundamental strength of your country. You must recognize your country when you're going in those cool. sessions because you are independent. So to when you start to hear a conversation to say, you won't wait to see what happened. Yeah. The minute you sign is problems. The days where you won't start to see what's happening because you sign. So the pulling out with Antigua is very really good. And uh, we have conscience independence, Mr. Patches. We've been having different governments governing our country. In this day and age, we have a young government. But we also have to remember the adults in this country. The country still make up of adults, of even course. though we have a young population. True. And experience is a teacher, and is a day-to-day -day experience. People, we we know our young people are qualified with education, etc. But experience is where the adults have the teaching effect. And you see, poverty is in this country. Some of our adults fall to weakness and are afraid to say what is correct because the young people see things. And when you expose yourself in this country, mm. you've got a problem. Mm. So the adults in the country, they still have decent-minded adults in the country. that speak on issues that you play one or two, tip tonight from some ladies. And... Because we cannot develop a country without morals, we must 
continue to develop our country with more values. That's a little piece on that, and then we touch the, the resolution the other day in the House of Assembly, Mr. Patches. It's quite strange. A resolution brought to the floor for debate. Remember, we always hear nothing was done in the past seven years. But yes, still, a recommendation was in 2019, and they've got to be within the past seven years. At least, if you're featuring yourself of that to say, well, you, you, you deal with that as a projection, that means something great was done, because at least you're picturizing that. And to see a resolution was to the floor, a resolution of that nature. And it was what is surprising that no minister of government, Not one. no elected minister of government, debated at the time in that period of time when the resolution was on the floor to make some presentation to the people. I find that very, 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 very. Because you see, we have an attorney general, and an attorney general is the face, any part of the world, an attorney general is the face of a government. And when I see in this country, Mr. Patches, that a lawyer have the facts before him, and even though he see the facts is against him, he still present a case to the court and lost that case. And you know, it was an injunction. That's a serious matter. Was it was an injunction that was brought towards the country because it's a talk show host. You you put things to the people even before a decision was made. I mean, you hear people say, "Let us just take that and all them kind of nonsense." Whereas, look at the facts, look at the issues because your nation, you must govern your nation with morals. Mr. Patches, you continue to be good and stay strong. God bless. God bless you as well, my dear brother. Always very assertive and to the point. Let's go back to the lines. Uh, caller, I want to thank you for holding as well your life. Are you there, caller? Call? Yes, caller, you live? Yes, good evening, Mr. Lyber. Yes, my brother. Good evening, Carl. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Have, yes, I'm here. You have, you have your equipment done, so I'll just move away. Yes, I'm here. yes Mr. Lyber. Yes, you're live, Carl. Yes. Mr. Lyber, three quick things. We have been asking Dr. Joe and the Labour government what is their stand on same-sex marriages. Since last year, the European Union and those people forced, we have to put it that way, forced upon these Caribbean government that they must fall in line and they must adopt same-sex marriages. A number of Caribbean countries have said they're not interested in doing it and nobody is going to force them into doing it too strong caribbean countries prime minister said that we have been asking dr joe what his comment and what is his stand he have not come to the country to have no discussion because it's a matter that we must discuss they him and his government cannot just go over there and say think it say yes or think it say no I think it is thinking about it. He he has to come and have discussion with us. There need to be town hall meetings. There need to be panel discussion. There need to be discussions and talk shows. And nothing yet has been said. Every time they ask Dr. Joe, he has nothing to say. The other thing, the other thing is, Mr. Leibold, on the number of tasks what that Dr. Joe has signed and he has been asked a thousand and more time now. And how many tasks do you think it have out there? And all he keeps saying is that Dr. Timothy Harris signed the most. We ain't asking that. We are asking how much passport have you signed on on 
since your government is in and how many of our passports is out there. And he does give you a whole baloney go around the world telling you all kind of nonsense what you've done already now. Which thing is that they are changing up certain things, they, they are making the, 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 the program stronger, they are putting more let's say to investigate these people who apply and are, we know all of that is happening. What we want to know is how many passports have you signed on since you've been prime minister? How many passports is out there? And he must know because only the prime minister can sign. So he must know. And he keeps telling people about must go to ask Mikey Martin. And when they call Mikey Martin, Mikey Martin can't give them an answer neither. So what is going on with our CVI? What, what? The last thing, Mr. Leibert, is that <clears throat> did you do any homework on the 13 people that Casper is to let go from the first of next month? Because uh, they're letting go all the cleaners, 13 of them. And some of them used to work for 2000 and 2005 a month. They, they have terminated all of them and they have hired a young lady who I understand from constituency tree to, to contract that person to be, um, to take up the cleaning job now. And this person is telling the workers that they will hire them back, but they have to take minimum wage. The other thing about that, Mr. Leib, information I have gathered concerning those 13 workers, since last year, every time they have a meeting, they have said to the minister, Ms. Marsha Henderson, they have said to the manager at the port, and all the top, persons that are in the meeting that they are hearing that they are going to lose their job and they're going to hire a private entity. And they keep telling the workers, Mr. Leibert, oh, nothing, doctor, don't study what you hear people saying. Nothing go like that. We're not going to um, ter terminate your all services. Okay. Only to learn, Mr. Leibert, the first of this month, March 2024, they had a meeting and that is when the loan that the job has gone. You probably came in a little no. late. You, 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 I, I take your point. You probably came in a little late. But uh, what, is, what are your views on this full and free access to live and work in St. Kitts by any CARICOM? Uh, Rubbish and nonsense. We do not support that and we are not accepting that. Here is it, Mr. Leibert. You don't have enough work for your people. How are you going to access or acknowledge free movement of Caribbean people when, you, when, when this government has not opened a job for its people up to now? Okay, okay. Where's okay. the job? Okay, got you, my boy. So no, we are not accepting that and you must not sign on it. Okay. I'm gone. Thank you very much for your input. And that seemed to be the general view of uh, most, if not all, of the citizens in this country, this unrestricted access to live and work in St. Kitts and Nevis. And this caller summed it up well. This whole thing is nothing but a mess. This six months is good. Thank you, Dr. Kilman. I want Mr. Johan to be just train the young one never come in. This is going to match up the players. This ain't so good. This sounds like a trick and a mess. Eh? How good? Yes, caller, you are live. Hello, caller. Yeah, good evening, Patches. How are you, my brother? Good evening. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm kind of late, no? Better late than never. Right, right. Um, I see you had a newspaper there, but anyway, let's go. I want to say this. I congratulate. Sorry, I congratulate. Something else. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I just caught. I just caught what you were saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a thesis. A thesis. Yeah, before I forget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me tell my good friend J JF. Good evening. I'm Mr. Straight Up, and, and as usual, all the listeners to this program. That is, if 
you live in your mother house or your grandmother house. And somebody come in there every day with a hammer, banging the house and breaking it in. And people could actually walk in the street and look in your house and see you. And we are waking you down. Really meet the person who banging you, your grandmother house next morning and smile with them, shake the hand and say they're doing good? No. Well, that is happening around here and it's, it's obvious. Now, come back to the thing now. I agree with Gaston Brown because what Gaston Brown is doing is proving to the world that his people voted and put him in position. So therefore, he got to, he got to be concerned about them and he got to look down the road to protect them before he go and sign any, any stupidness to the CSME. CSME mean Caribbean Suicidal Movement Enterprise. That is how we term it. But what we got here in St. Kitts with, 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 um, with this Don to Dick, Sesame Street leader, he don't care because he buy the election, like he said, and the election he bought from animals. That's why he going and sign here and sign here and sign all kind of foolishness. If he had respect people who put him there, he would not have been doing all this nonsense. He don't show no love for the people in the country. All he can show is he long pocket them and move the governor, I mean the judge, out of the house that was provided for a judge. Put the judge over Figgy Bay, where the judge cannot have no view of the ocean, like he say. Um, team Unity block up all the way and block the, uh, the view of the ocean. All that, he shouldn't, he shouldn't even talk about all the way because he said Team Unity did nothing. Well, if they did not, nothing, how they could block the view? And all the way by putting that thing. Well, anyway, a lot of things that that man they're doing, that, that don't do dick leader is doing to this country but this is only in St. Christopher these things would happen and get away with it nowhere else in the world and if you if you if you if you know what is happening worldwide you're gonna trickle off and wish down here and he better stop his foolishness and he lie them why he promised people five hundred dollars oh no that was too much the, the unity government were wasting the money we're going to give them 1500 Where is it? The 1500 1500 gone in them their pocket with a big raise and the, the poor people small drop out, take out. That's why a lot of people are malnourished and they are starving and the stomach cannot take a lot of the, the surgery that they're supposed to take because they're malnourished. Anyway, Pastor, I don't want to stay long like some people. Okay. But I'll try and get back in before you close up. Thank if it's one punch, I'll come back and do it. Thank you very much for your contribution as usual. And as you said, animals, it, it reminded me of, of, of uh, the drive we had to to assist Jean Foy. And, and quite a few people uh, confirmed that they called her and sent uh, some funds via 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 what was that one? Not not uh, uh, I've lost it by MoneyGram, right? And uh, someone called me today and said they were trying to get her, but she was not answering her telephone. So uh, Jean Foy, if you're listening, uh, there are quite a few people have tried to contact you and never never got you. That's what I'm told, and then. Um, I can confirm as well that quite a few people have already reached out to you, so I trust that that uh, things are going well in that regard, uh, my street dog family. So, Lady Foy and I want to thank those who heeded the call and uh, decided to to assist this lady who Jean Foy who lost uh, her animals. Uh, Penny patches many people don't know that the snake work with a Nevis Jumbi. The snake lover represented a number of corrupt money launderers and they are in US jails today. And the snake is out. And the borough had interviewed a white man who claimed that the snake and his wife ripped him off of millions of dollars in a deal, remember, 
Douglas pleaded to the snake in the National Assembly to give back the man his money. And when the man was about to take the snake to court for his money, the man died. That was John B. Working. And with all them successive elections, he boasts that he won over NRP. It was John B. at work. But he's trying to get the interview with Edinburgh and the white man to find out if the man got back his money before he died with this email. Patches, the Prime Minister is the devil, and the Attorney General is Lucifer. They are both one and the same. Two worthless greedy liars. Dr. Drew said today at his social or so-called round table that the increases in salaries were debated in 2021 and was voted upon. If that was true, what need would have been to introduce a resolution to increase ministers' salaries if it had already been debated and voted upon and passed? This guy must think that all of us are stupid, like those reporters who does be in front of him asking lame questions and no follow-up. Only one question was asked about the increase in salary. Uh, it was towards the end of this waste of time so-called round table. It's like they were all afraid to ask the question. This prime minister must stop wasting our time for all he does stumbling, fumbling, babbling and blaming other people. What has he done to improve the lives of the people of this country? Absolutely nothing, but he increased his salary. A worthless, greedy vagabond, that's what he is. Read that email. Let's go back to the lines. Hello, thank you for holding your life. Hello, Carl? Yes, Mr. Leibert. Yes, sir. Yes, Carl here again. Uh, Mr. Leibert, let me give a little history here. Every time the Labour government is in power, many people lose their job at the ear and support. Let me give you all some history. When Labour got into power, um, that was 95, right? We all, I, I don't know how many people remember Manners, who just calling on these radio talk shows. He and a gang of people lost their jobs at the port. You remember that, right? Yes, I remember it very well. I was there. Okay. And then... Labour continued to win successive elections. Then they came up with packages that people must take the packages and leave the port. Labour again, get rid of them. Right? Dr. Joe is in now. 13 workers now lose their job under Labour government again. When I was jumping up to this song, I was listening to sweet music. Boy, you didn't listen in the words, and the words was clearly, and I was singing the words and dancing and wailing, right? And I was singing the words, and the words were saying, get rid of them. Well, I is no part of the them that is they are getting rid of, right? Every time a Labour government is in, many people lose their job at EE and seaport. I, people must follow the history, right? The the other thing is, Mr. Leibert, some more information. That meeting that they had with those 13 workers on the 1st of March 2024, they also walk with members of the Labor Department. They also walk with top officials from um, the Port Authority and the CEO, which is overseas, for many, many, many months now, and medical attention and getting pay, they say she do a Zoom in that meeting. And also they say they work with insurance people. So this meeting was well organized and well planned to get rid of these workers a very long time. But it since last year, Patrick, Every time they have meetings, they keep asking the top officials and telling them in the meeting that we hear that I oh, is planning to get rid of and hire a private entity. And they keep telling the workers, no, 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 nothing got up. I even have a job. Only to learn the first. 
of March 2024, they no longer have no job by the 1st of April because the private entity that is now going to take up the cleaning job at the EMC port is coming in and start work from the 1st of April. Okay. Okay. That's you, my brother. Thanks a lot for your intervention as usual. I, I'm i trying to find this sound bite. I... I didn't get to listen to it, but let's see if this is the one I'm looking for. The proposed increase in the Prime Minister's income, total income, in the salaries review report. The increase in the Prime Minister's income is 26%. The proposed increase in the Deputy Prime Minister's income is 29%. Okay, well, let's go back to the lines. Uh, caller. Yes, caller, you're live. Hello, caller. Yeah. Okay, Patrick, I'm back. Yes, you're live. No. Yeah, Patches. Yes, you're live, my brother. Yeah. Um, it is said that when one going to point a finger at another one, three fingers at, at the, the pointer, do you remember when <laughs> when we, um, we started the peel that was spoiled? And then all of a sudden the peer come good. You remember when that day was the day when they talk about it? All kind of people had a lot of things to say. Mm-hmm. Especially liar button up. Was vexed with you because liar button up did not get what he wanted out of the peer. Now I heard liar button up yesterday on a commentary talking about the geothermal <coughs> that's supposed to develop in Nevis. That the geothermal should be owned by locals. <laughs> locals, you know. And when you were doing the peer, he was against the decision that the government made to get the money to do the peer from local businesses in St. Kitts. You are never go overseas. And he was criticizing that. But no, he was saying that, I mean, he was saying that, why did you all take the money from the local businesses? You all should have get the money from overseas. But no, the same local now he's saying that should, should, should own the geothermal and leave the overseas money. So you see the hypocrisy in, in a lot of Negro. People, the main people, them are Negro. But the Bible speak about them. Hypocrites. And Judas is all of them there. So we're supposed to be not to be now nah, not to surprise when we see them do their foolishness. They're putting their foot in their mouth. Now come back to the CSME business here, Patrick. I said it yesterday on a talk show. We see what is happening in, in Haiti. The gunmen them, the, the, the gangster them, they release thousands of people from prison. And I said, with the CSME, suppose a thousand of them want to come here to St. Kitt and say that they are skilled people. And they let them in here. What's going to happen to us? Our population is not even 70,000. Let me, let me call the number. Not even that. And then a lot of people here cannot get work. A lot of people were depending on the construction of the new high school that the, the, the farm administration team unity were going to build. And a lot of them people would have been employed. They killed that. So those people who was expecting to be employed, no employment, some of them, not even till today, get anything to do. And they come talking about good governance, and they care about people, eh? and transparency and all this here. When Beg and Bow are going for radio, go, 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 go tell lies to people, and when you call in and you give in the facts, you want to cut quiet. I am a caller now. I want to have the panda. No, no, no. Let us talk the truth because the Lord, the good Lord, do not like liars. And them lie what they're telling, he can back for you upon them and he can stick down the tongue in the mouth when they open the mouth to talk. But just have a good night, brother. Have a good night as well. Let's yeah, thank you very much. Eh? Always good to hear you. Uh, let's get rid of these emails before I wrap my straight dog family. Uh, it is quite in order, Patches, for the bigger islands to speak of free movement because all the ec- economies are in a mess. 
When things were good with them, they had no use for the smaller islands. In fact, you could not even get on the West Indies cricket team, and if you got a pick, you had to perform three times as good as others. Their only interest in free movement for the bigger islands is to free up their country of the unemployed, is this email. Good night, Mr. Liber. With the minimum wage going up $70, the water and electricity going up in Nevis, so that $70 will be taken back by the government, reads this email. I am writing patches with deep concern regarding St. Kitts and Nevis's representation at the recent CARICOM summit. It has become apparent that our delegation's performance fell drastically short compared to our counterparts from other member countries. While Trinidad, Barbados, and every other island sent seasoned politicians with decades of experience, St. Kitts and Nevis was represented by Dr. Drew, who possessed a mere one year of political experience alongside Larry Vaughan, a complete novice in the political arena. This glaring disparity in expertise and experience left our nation woefully unprepared to effectively negotiate and defend our interests at the summit. Consequently, St. Kitts and Nevis succumbed to pressures agreeing to the unrestricted movement of CARICOM nationals within our borders without adequately considering the severe economic, social, and cultural ramifications for our nation. Such a reckless decision-making process showcases a gross oversight and incompetence on the part of our delegation, putting St. Kitts and Nevis at significant risk. It is imperative that immediate action be taken to rectify this situation and ensure that our nation is represented by individuals who possess the competence and expertise necessary to safeguard our interests on the regional stage. I urge you to address this matter with utmost urgency and take concrete steps to ensure that St. Kitts and Nevis is adequately represented in all future CARICOM summits. Reads this email. Good night, Mr. Lyburn. Bear in mind, Drew and Mark have two things in common. They like lots of money and the both of them's wife are not from St. Kitts and Nevis. Reads this email. And this final email I'll take for tonight reads... Good evening, Patches. The Minister of Sports is a fool. He, he taking the children across to Nevis for the inter-school races and putting a burden on the parents of these children by the school, asking the parents to, to need $50 for food and accommodation. It's nonsense. The minister ain't know what he's doing uh, with that email. And those are the emails for tonight, my straight talk family. And as we wrap, for those of you who may have joined me uh, after I started, our, we looked at our thesis for tonight, which we titled The Principal Stakes and Challenges from Freedom of Entry. Uh, the, let me take that back. The Principal Stakes and Challenges, no, to Freedom of Entry, by all people to St. Kitts and Nevis. And my Street Talk family, as we wind up tonight's programming, we looked at this thesis tonight from the perspective, the clear perspective that everything just seemed to be going wrong with our government, our administration. One thing is common, is this incumbent Labour administration has done quite well since assuming office, is to totally disregard the electorate by their actions or inactions. And in the process, they have confirmed that this July administration is not a government of the people, for the people, and by the people. My Street Dog family, the principle or the basic concept 
or rule that explains or controls how the unrestricted movement of all people within the CARICOM region will work when the revised Treaty of Chagaramos is further revised. How will it work, we ask. And Roosevelt Skerritt made this point uh, since about 10 months ago at the closing press conference after the 50th anniversary conference that was held in Trinidad and Tobago. And Skerritt said this to us. On the issue of um, free movement, we uh, deliberated on this matter. We have taken a decision uh, to uh, seek to have uh, the free movement of all categories uh, of people to live and work. Uh, obviously, there are some legal issues that we have to examine, and we are giving the legal people um, some months uh, to examine those legal issues uh, and, and to ensure that we can come to us by, by 30th of March. Um, to, to, to take a definite, definitive position on this. And, and so we understand that there will be some challenges for some, um, but we are committed to this. Um, in addition to the free movement, that there will be certain contingent rights that will be associated with the free movement of people. Uh, access to primary health care and emergency health care. Access to basic education, pre-primary, primary, and secondary education. Um, uh, of course, we have this social security agreement in place already that people can benefit from. But we believe this is a, a fundamental part of the integration architecture. And at 50, we could not leave Trinidad and Tobago um, and not speak about the core of the integration movement. That is people's ability to move freely within the Caribbean community. And, and yes, my sweet dog family, what is at stake? What is the financial involvement of St. Kitts and Nevis in this decision to facilitate the freedom of movement of all people across the region? And these are questions that are important. My children family, there are also challenges. The people of St. Kitts and Nevis elected a government, a new government in August 2022. And without discussion with the people who elected them, Ten months thereafter, an experienced leader who came onto the scene found himself in a situation of being faced with a very important and far-reaching decision that needed great mental or physical effort and wide consultation with the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. Prior to sub, uh, committing to a signing this or uh, fixing his signature, to this latest revision to the revised Treaty of Chagaramos that would allow freedom of movement of all people of the region. My sweet dog family, there was no consultation, none whatsoever, and the country demands that. The country demands that at this time, my sweet dog family. Good morning. Good morning, Devon. Good morning. Yes, uh, um, I hope that um, when the Prime Minister comes on tomorrow for the round table, that there is some kind of clarification or statement or position of stake the needs that is, is presented. Um, this, this like came out of the blue. And it seemed like it has been, I don't know if it was leaked or whatever, but it certainly came out in the press for us rather than our leaders. And I think um, it's only Antigua that essentially is given a position on it. A and yes, only Antigua issued a decision on it. And really, it came out of the blue. And when you was asked on his round table today, what did he say? He said nothing. Absolutely nothing, my straight talk family. He just waffled. 
fundamental pillar of any college service to the people of the issue of full free movement of dark nationals we've seen media reports regarding Antigua and Barbuda's position, Bermuda, Barbados. What do you think is the new business position on the full free movement of dark nationals? Right. So I, I, I want to say that that, of course, is a discussion that was held. But St. Kitts and Nevis's position is that in, we have been, you know, part, in, anything we do will be in the best strategic interest of St. Kitts. So let me put that forward. Nothing we will do. We'll, we will do the detriment of St. Kitts. But he doesn't say what he will do. And I submit, my sweet dog family, that national politics must play a role in whether we move towards agreeing to the unrestricted access of all people to all member countries within CARICOM, including St. Kitts and Nevis. And I say this because I heard the host refer to a Larry, listening to the show in person, and he referred to a Larry. And someone said that he is the St. Kitts and Nevis ambassador to CARICOM. And it really sounded like his voice I heard this morning. He was on national radio, my street dog family, and attempted to give the people of St. Kitts and Nevis a lecture on regional integration. He was condescending. His comments were absurd. And he demonstrated to us that as a St. Kitts and Nevis ambassador to CARICOM, he is living in a bubble, my straight dog family. But as we wrap my straight dog family, in closing, we can boast of 50 years of CARICOM integration. Yes, we can. Some critical in our organizations have been established. And yes, we talk about economic integration, but is that true? My street dog family. Economic integration has costs. Diversion of trade is a cost. Erosion of our national sovereignty is a concern. Employment shifts and reductions in employment are concerns. And my street dog family, we have agreed when asked about the freedom of movement, just today, the Prime Minister July spoke in a language known as gibberish, meaning his response, his words, and how his sentences had no meaning whatsoever. When you listen to July, his responses and comments to all questions, my street dog family, make you want to sin your soul. But truth is, here in St. Kitts, everyone would be attracted to this quote-unquote high-income country. Everyone in St. Kitts would not be attracted to Jamaica, for example, or even Guyana, though they found oil. So the rush will head to these two islands and one lovely paradise. And we must protect them. The people of St. Kitts and Nevis must oppose this unrestricted access to our economic integration due to concerns over loss of sovereignty, lack of jobs, housing, crime, the overstressing of our education and already the deteriorating health systems. My street dog family, we in St. Kitts Nevis must demand consultation with the people. We must send a clear message to July to be transparent as his secret plans have now been exposed by the media. So his sinister plans have been exposed, my street dog family. Unlike in Antigua, 
they were very, very clear of their position. We have concern that if we were to allow the unrestricted flow of CARICOM nationals into the country, that it will imperil, among other things, our social services. Sending states do not want to provide any type of assistance to a place like Antigua and Barbuda. Remember, we do not have gold, silver, bauxite, oil. We do not have it. We are optimistic that the heads would accept Antigua and Barbuda's requests and pleadings with respect to uh, utilizing the skills regime, maintaining it in its current status. So we anticipate that those who are not um, going the route of full free movement will adopt and maintain the skills regime. We have concerned that if we were to allow the unrestricted flow of CARICOM nationals into the country, that it will imperil, among other things, our social services. And so too, in St. Kitts, my street dog family. So we must not only demand consultations in every community, and we must also go further and demand that our representatives at the CARICOM level demand a carve-out. And we must also demand as well a referendum to determine the principal stakes and challenges and vote no to freedom of entry by all people from the Caribbean region to live and work in St. Kitts with unrestricted access. That's my story tonight, my street dog family, and I am not going to change it. But I will thank Almighty God for guiding our conversation tonight. As always, I want to thank you, the callers. You, the many listeners, you, the emailers, and just to inform you that you are the ones who make Straight Talk. So until we connect on Monday for another edition of Straight Talk, be good to yourselves and to all whom you meet. And remember, whatever your mind conceive, that you will achieve. But my Straight Talk family, first of all, you must believe. So when you wake in the morning, thank God for the morning light. Thank him for taking you through the night. And my straight talk family, keep moving on. Bye-bye. Until we connect on Monday. Have yourselves a restful, wonderful weekend.
heart and soul Beg him to take me through each day My guardian to keep And my guide Over every step I take He will preside Stop somehow 